恭请大德圣地为此发为，及一切众生，请转妙法轮教导我们，如何了生脱死，离苦得乐，殊胜无生。Will the Sangha with great virtue, out of compassion, for the sake of this assembly and all living beings, please turn the wonderful Dharma wheel to teach us how to live suffering and attain bliss and end birth and death and quickly realize non birth? Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambhutasa. Homage to the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one. Namo Sadanto Sucheto Ye Allahati San Miao San Puto Che. Wu Shang Shen Shen Wei Miao Fa Bai Qian Wan Jie Nan Sao Yi Wo Jin Jian Wen De Shou Chu Yan Jie Ru Lai Zhen Shi Yi Supreme and wondrous Dharma, subtle and profound, rarely is uncounted, even in a billion eons. But now we see and hear it and accept it permanently. May we truly understand the Buddha's actual meaning. Namo, quelling disasters, lending thy medicine, Master Buddha. Namo. Quelling disasters, lending life, medicine master, Buddha Namo. Quelling disasters, lending life, medicine master, Buddha Namo. Quelling disasters, lending life, medicine master, Buddha Namo. Quelling disasters, lending life, medicine master, Buddha. Namo quelling disasters, lending life, medicine master, Buddha. Namo quelling disasters, lending life, medicine master. Buddha, medicine master, does come one. 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 Buddha's Bodhisattvas, Mirabha Master, and all good knowing advisors, welcome back. This is uh. Class number sixty-two of our exploration of the of the Sutra of the Merit and Virtue of the Past Vows of Medicine Master Vajira Light Tathagata, Medicine Master Buddha. Okay, let me get to today's uh, slide. Okay. Um, right now in um at this very moment. In the Buddha Hall downstairs at uh, Tan Pian Monastery, Malaysia, we are have we just started. Today is the first day of a seven-day Amitabha session for Chi, 
Um, so if anyone wants to tune in, either now or uh, after the class is over, you, you may. So today for seven days, I believe CDTB is also um, uh, starting. Let me see. Today is Sunday. This Saturday. Perhaps tomorrow, I believe CDTB is going to, to start. Okay. Um, we are still continuing in the same section of the Medicine Master Buddha Sutra from, from last week. If anyone has any questions uh, or any interesting stories to share, uh, uh, anecdotes uh, to share, just type in the chat box or as usual, just unmute your mic and, and speak up. All right, let's move on to the Sutra. Um, so uh, this is a section of the Sutra that, that we are still at. Um, I'll just read it again to refresh our memories. This, uh, the, okay, I'll read. They pray to the spirits of the mountain forest, trees, and graves. They kill living beings in order to make sacrifices of blood and flesh to the Yaksha and Rakshaksha ghosts. They write down the names of their enemies and make images of them, and then they hex those names and images with evil mantras. They summon paralysis ghosts, cast hexes, or command corpse raising ghosts to kill or injure their enemies. So, in one of the um, uh, WhatsApp messages that uh, in the group, Sachal shared that he sometimes he he has had. Uh, he has encountered sleep paralysis before. And um, so we came to the conclusion that while we can kind of say that um, Kumbanda ghosts or sleep paralysis ghosts do cause sleep paralysis, we don't know enough uh, to say that all sleep paralysis incidents are caused by Kumbanda ghosts. I don't think it's fair to make that uh, the kind of, of logic. Yeah. Okay. Ron has a question. Says, Fashu, may I ask where can we read about the merits and benefits from reciting the Great Compassion Mantra? Okay. Actually, Ron, um, the uh, in today's class there are some slides from the Dharani Sutra, which is about the Great Compassion Sutra, and that's the sutra where you can get your questions answered. And when when I come to that, but the, the Dharani Sutra, uh, I'm going to quote Shufu from the Dharani Sutra, uh, ask your question again, or, uh, yeah. Okay. Let's move on today. Um, so, uh, let's explore a bit about Rakshaksha ghost. Um, Shufu says that Rakshaksha ghost, and this is Shufu's commentary from the Shurangama Sutra. Shufu says that ghosts and spirits occupy large trees that are several hundreds of years old. It is not that the trees themselves are spirits, as many people think. People pray to tree spirits, saying things like, help me win at the horse races and I'll build you a temple. The spirit may help them win, but their winning is actually a mistake in cause and effect. They kill living beings. People not only pray to spirits, they bribe them with fish, meat and liquor. The spirits greedily drink the liquor and once they are drunk, they cause a lot of trouble. With ghosts and spirits being so greedy for bribes, it is no wonder there are corrupt officials in the world. Um, so in, in, in the country like Malaysia, um, it's common, it's not uncommon sometimes to see, uh, mini altars or, um, how you, I'm not sure what they call them. Um, they are red in color. They are, uh, like a little. Uh, container that you can place offerings at for the the local protective spirit, and it's not uncommon to see those or incense at places where there are large trees or sometimes huge boulders. Um, there was once in California we had um, Imi Ui and uh, uh, Wajra singers who came for a concert, and one of the places we took them was a forest reserve, a redwood forest reserve in, in, uh, North, Northern California. And we went on a very long hike. I think it was a one hour or an hour and a half. I don't know. It just seemed really long. 
And at the end of the trail, um, of one of the trails that existed in this redwood forest, there was a clearing, a natural clearing, um, and there was a stream that was nearby. And in the clearing, um, there was, I think, uh, uh, some rocks. Uh, I don't remember what it was. Was it a tree stump or a natural ledge made from, from a boulder? And on this boulder, a lot of people had left offerings there uh, of, of sorts. Um, I'm, I, I don't know the reason behind it or, the, or any story behind it. Uh, but look, reading this passage, Shufu's commentary reminded me of that. So out in a clearing in a, in a remote forest area, there were hikers who felt who co felt compelled to to make an offering or a gesture of some kind um, in that area. So in the sutras, um, rakshakshas are always connected to isolated forest pools. In fact, there's a, um, I'm going to share a story today about that. And in these stories, there's the, the person who's wise, who usually comes uh, towards, after, after unwise people have visited the pond, what do we call them unwise? Because the wise person notices that uh, there are footsteps leading to the pond, but there are no footsteps coming out. So the wise person realizes that, oh, okay, there's something going on, uh, something dangerous. So the, the wise person looks up for signs. Um, it is said in some commentaries that the, uh, the imagery of an isolated forest pool is meant to represent something that you have, but you don't use. So it's, uh, it, it can, how you say, you can read into it as it's signifying someone who's stingy, someone who has wealth, but it's not sharing it with anyone. So Miss Yap has an experience she can share. Um, why don't we wait for a short break later, Miss Yap, and then I'll, I'll call on you. All right. And if you're running out of time and I forget, uh, please, uh, unmute your mic. Sure, okay. Pastor. It's just on the topic that you're talking about, those spirits okay. in the forest. Yeah. Oh, okay. Why don't you share it now? Then I can tell the story after you're done. Uh, I went to Sarawak uh, quite a number of years ago, and uh, we went on a hike to the primary jungle in Sarawak. So we get a guide to actually bring us in because it's very thick jungle. So the guide was one of the locals there. So he says that before we go into this kind of big primary jungles, we have to actually pray to uh, the spirit of the jungle, which is actually linked to the uh, stories. I mean, the, the things that you're sharing today. I wasn't very sure what it was at that time. I was thinking that probably just some of the routines that uh, the traditional people follow. So what he did was exactly the same. He uh, offers uh, meat, he offers food, and he offers liquor. So, and then after that, he will do some prayers. After some prayers, then only we are allowed to go into the jungle. And during the course that we are in the jungle, there are a lot of rules to abide to, such as you cannot call names in the jungle, like a few of us going. So if you see anything, you cannot shout out your friend's name in the jungle. And then uh, we are advised not to pluck anything along the lane as we go. And... Um, as well as you can't pee anywhere you like in the jungle. So there was a lot of these uh, rules that he shared with us, which at that time we thought it was just superstitious, but now it seems like it, it meant something. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for the time, Fasa. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks, thanks for sharing that. Uh, so for those who do not know about Sarawak, Sarawak is a state in Malaysia and it is on the... Uh, is it an, it's not an island. It's not a continent either. It's in Borneo. So uh, where you find the world's oldest rainforest, uh, you, you would, Sarawak would definitely uh, qualify. So Malaysia is really interesting. You get a crowd of people in Malaysia, you throw a pebble, and if you hit two people, 
uh, you, you will get 10 stories about ghosts and spirits and, and encounters like this. Do's and don'ts about uh, when you go to certain, certain places. So Malaysia is really rich with all these uh, stories. Um, okay, so um, all right, let's go through. Uh, I have two stories and I will see if I have enough time. One is a good story as in it shows a the positive side of, of uh, spirits, how they can help you. Uh, the first one that we have is a more traditional uh, spirit about uh, Rakshakshas. So um, this particular Rakshaksha had been given permission by uh, King Vesavana. Who is King Vesavana? Okay, he is one of the four heavenly gods, the four heavenly kings. If you go to a, a Mahayana temple, you will see usually at the entrance or guarding the Buddha hall at the four corners, there are four heavenly kings. And uh, King Vesavana is the king of Uttaraku or the he oversees the northern area. And he is king of all ghosts and spirits, of all the Yakshas and Rakshakshas. Uh, they all get their um, instructions uh, to him from him. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, th there's more about that uh, in a later slide. So for now, this particular Rakshaksha had been given the permission that if anyone were to go to his pawn, uh, this Rakshaksha could eat them, okay? Uh, and uh, accept people who know, who knew the divine teachings, the teachings of gods, Deva Dharma. Okay, in this story, it does not say what Deva Dharma is. Uh, I guess it is uh, It's safe to assume that it's, it's any teaching either based on the Dharma or based on, on, on virtue. So everyone who went to the pond, and because this is an isolated forest pond, it's not like you know, a pond next to a village where children and, 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 and people go every day. Uh, it's one of those, maybe if you're lost or you're, you know, trekking long from one place to the other and you're taking an a, 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 a uncommon path that you will come across this pond. So anyone who came across this pond, the Rakshasha would ask them, do you know what the divine teachings are? And if they said no, he would eat them on the spot. Okay. So there were three brothers. Okay. And um, one day, one of the brothers went to the pond. And the Rakshasha sees him and asks him, what is the divine, are the divine teachings? So uh, uh, these three brothers were princes. So the, he, he replied, he said, the sun and the moon are what are called the divine teachings. Then the Rakshasha said, you obviously do not know what the divine teachings are. So he dragged the priest underwater, just like a crocodile. And he, but this time he didn't eat him yet. Okay. He put him in his house, in an underwater house, uh, wanting to eat him later. So when the first brother did not come back, the second prince, the second brother went to look for the first brother. Again, the same thing happened. He was seized by the Rakshaksha and ask about what are the divine teachings. And this time he said the four directions, north, south, east, and west were the divine teachings. And the Rakshasa said, well, you don't know what I'm, you don't know what the divine teachings are. And again, drag him underwater to his house and imprison him, the two brothers together. So the third brother was waiting and this third brother, spoiler alert, uh, was the Buddha in a previous life. Okay, so he knew something was going on. He said, something's not right. Both my brothers have gone down to the pond and both of them have not come back. So when he approached the pond, he saw two sets of footprints going into the pond, but he didn't see any footprints coming back. Remember I told you about the footprints? Okay, so uh, this is a sign that he is wiser than the first two. So he, instinctively, he knew, he said, this pond must be held by a Rakshaksha. So what he did was he went back, he took, he arms himself with a sword, with a bow, with bow and an arrows, and he stood waiting near the pond. So the Rakshaksha, seeing that this third person 
did not go into the pond, he could not seize him. So what he did was he, remember in the earlier uh, slide, we talked about how these ghosts have, have powers. So this Rakshaksha changed his form. He became uh, a, a uh, what do you call, a, a woodcutter. He, uh, he, he looked like a woodcutter. And he approached this third brother saying, good sir, you must be tired from your traveling. Why don't you go into the pond, bathe, drink, eat the lotus uh, bulbs, and you know, uh, decorate yourself with the lotus flowers, and then you can continue on your way full and refreshed. So he's trying to entice this third brother into the water because that's the only way he has the, uh, the not authority here. That's the only way he he can uh, seize the brother, seize the person. So this third brother, uh, being wise, knew that this was actually the, the Rakshaksha. So he challenged the Rakshaksha. He said, was it you who took my two brothers? And the Rakshaksha replied, yes. He says, for what reason do you take them? And the reply was that I take all who descend into my pond who do not know the divine teachings. So the, bod the Bodhisattva, as the third brother, we can refer to him as the Bodhisattva because he, uh, he, he's the Buddha, but in a past life. So this third brother, the Bodhisattva said, he, he, he knew, he knows the divine teachings, but he will not speak of it while he was unclean. So the, he allowed the Rakshasha to bathe him. The Rakshasha actually offered him food and drink and then, um, anointed him with, uh, with perfume and decorated him with flowers, gave him a nice decorated chair to sit on. And uh, then the Bodhisattva uh, exclaimed the, the divine teachings. And what he said was this, he says, one with self-respect and fear of consequence, possessed of pure ways, they are the true men, they may be called those with the divine teachings. So the Rakshasha, upon hearing this, was very satisfied. He, he, he never heard a teaching like that before. So what he did was, in his appreciation, he freed the two brothers. And from then on, he became their protector. He became like their bodyguard uh, in the forest. And uh, when the third brother uh, became the king, uh, he appointed his two other brothers to to high positions, and then what they did was they uh, built a palace uh, for the Rakshaksha in the, uh, I think in the forest, I don't think it was in the city, yeah, and um, um, and I think there's a bit more to the story, but I don't have all the details, uh, so that's one example of uh, a, a Rakshaksha, yeah. Okay, um, for the second story, let's see if we have enough time, uh, but for now, uh, let's move on, okay? And so, Ron, uh, regarding your question about how you can find out more about the Great Compassion Mantra, uh, on your screen, you will see the Dharani Sutra. Look for the Dharani Sutra, or later I can um, email you what I have. Uh, this Sutra is on the Great Compassion Mantra, and Shu we have a version with Shufu's commentary. So this is Sh Shufu's commentary from that Sutra. Shufu says, a Bodhisattva is someone who likes to help other people. If you help others, then you are a Bodhisattva. If I help others, Shufu referring to himself, then he says, then I am a Bodhisattva. If you do not help others, then you are a Rakshaksha ghost. Okay. And Shufu says, if he doesn't help others, then he himself is a Rakshaksha ghost as well. Okay. So don't be a Rakshaksha ghost, be a Bodhisattva. Uh, Shufu continues by saying, he says, the Bodhisattva who regards the world sounds, which is one in Bodhisattva or Alokiteshvara Bodhisattva, often appears as a beautiful woman. And Rakshasha ghosts can also be very attractive. But Rakshasha ghosts are complete opposites to the Bodhisattva. A Rakshasha is selfish and thinks only of benefiting himself or herself, 
while the Bodhisattva thinks only of benefiting others and knows nothing of self-benefit. Thus, this one thought makes the difference between them. If you wish to be like the Bodhisattva, then you should benefit others. So people can change. All right. The, in the story that we just uh, uh, encountered, in, it's, the story was a Jataka story. I believe it is Jataka story number 278 told by the Buddha himself. Uh, we can see that uh, people can change. Just like Shufu says, he says, this one thought, thinking only about yourself, which is like a Rakshaksha, or as the protagonist in our story, the Rakshaksha, after receiving the teachings, he changed and he protect other people instead. Okay. So Shufu continues saying, uh, he says, but I have no power to help others, you say. She was speaking to a group of people. He says, first of all, I have no money. And secondly, I don't know how to talk to people. How can I help people? So Shufu is uh, anticipating what someone in the audience might think. And then Shufu says, I will tell you, have a compassionate mouth, not one which scolds people. Have a skillful tongue which finds ways to reason with people, not a tongue which continually gossips. Find a way to lessen the strife and discord in the world. Then whether or not you have money, you can foster merit. If you have money, you can use that too. But what is more important to have good thoughts, do good things, and be a good person. All right. So this is Shufu's commentary on uh, Rakshakshas from the Dharani Sutra. Okay. Now we can't talk about ghosts and spirits without mentioning the Earth Store Sutra. So I have here some excerpts from the Earth Store Sutra, and this part is on making offerings to ghosts and spirits. So this part is chapter seven and the title of the chapter is called Benefiting the Living and the Dead. So this is a stop Bodhisattva speaking to the Buddha, Shakyamuni Buddha. And the context here is when someone passes away, but the principles are still the same. It's still about making offerings to, to ghosts and spirits. Okay. So what a stop Bodhisattva says, it says, it says, suppose the evil karma created by beings was such that they fall into the bad destinies. If their relatives cultivate wholesome causes on their behalf when they are close to death, then their manifold offenses can be dissolved. If relatives can further do many good deeds during the first 49 days after the death of such beings, then the deceased can leave the evil destinies forever, be born as humans or gods, and receive supremely wonderful bliss. The surviving, excuse me, the surviving relatives will also receive limitless benefits. Then he goes on to say, he says, Therefore, before the Buddhas, world-honored ones, as well as before the gods, dragons, and the rest of the Eightfold Division, humans and non-humans, basically everyone, he says, I now exhort beings of Jambu Vipa to be careful to avoid harming, killing, and doing other unwholesome deeds, to refrain from worshipping ghosts and spirits or making sacrifices to them and to never call on mountain sprites on the day of death. Why is that? Killing, harming, and making sacrifices are not the least bit helpful to the deceased. Such acts only bind up the conditions of offenses so that they grow ever more deep and heavy. Uh, so here we have a new term, mountain sprites. What are mountain sprites? In Chinese, they are called, I can't pronounce it. I don't know how to pronounce it uh, correctly. It's Wang... Wang Liang, I, I don't know the intonation. Uh, Shufu says, says that the classification of spirits, which can be harmful as well. Oh, let me see. It's like nine. Okay, uh, Asa Bodhisattva continues by saying the disease might have been due to increase his, his or her potential for sagehood or gain birth among humans or gods in his next life or in the future. But when his family commits offenses in his name, his good rebirth will be delayed. How much more would that be the case for people on the verge of death who during their lives have planted few good roots? Next slide. Each offender has to undergo the bad destinies according to his own karma. 
how could anyone bear to have relatives add to that karma? That would be like having a neighbor add a few more things to a load of over 100 pounds being carried by someone who had already traveled a long distance who had not eaten for three days. By adding that extra weight, that person's burden would become even more unbearable. So, um, so that's uh, Ersto Bodhisattva explaining why we shouldn't uh, make offerings to ghosts and spirits. So in the, the context for that was for as of, as people who are trying to help their deceased uh, relatives in the mistaken belief that uh, it will provide some benefit to them. But as Tho Bodhisattva points out, actually it, it does not. So under those circumstances, you actually burden um, the disease with, uh, with dark karma um, instead. Yeah. So for any other offerings and that involves uh, meat or fish or liquor, imagine what you do to yourself. So, okay. So this is, now we are on a different chapter from the Earth Source Sutra. This is chapter eight. Uh, and it's titled Praises of King Yama and his followers. So I'll just read from the start of this chapter. It says, at that time, the ghost evil king, uh, the ghost king evil poison placed his palms together respectfully and addressed the Buddha saying, well honored one, it offers countless ghost kings of Jambut Vipa bestows benefit or inflicts harm on beings differently. But our karmic retributions are such that we and our followers roam in the world doing much evil and little good. When we pass a household, a city, a town, a garden, a cottage, or a hut, where there are more men or women who have cultivated as little as a hair's worth of good deeds, who have hung out but one banner or one canopy, who have used a little incense or a few flowers as offerings to images of Buddhas or Bodhisattvas, who have recited the sacred sutras or burned incense as an offering to even one sentence or gatha in them. We ghost kings will res respect such people as we would the Buddhas of the past, present and future. So you will notice in, on the top title, we have protection for ghosts and spirits. Last week, we talked about how we should uh, uh, put, what are the things that we can do to protect ourselves and you know we talked about some uh like miss yap she just shared do's and don'ts when you go into a forest uh and everything she shared i've heard before so it's how you say it. it's you could say it's, it's almost common knowledge if you kind of grew up in malaysia and you've ever had to venture into the dense uh, uh forest not everyone knows, but uh, most people kind of know. So how do we protect ourselves uh, using the Dharma? So here, King Yama is explaining how in a household, if there's one person who does even the, the, the slightest uh, uh, act of good or worship, respecting the Buddha and the Bodhisattvas and the Dharma, uh, this is what happens. Yeah. And uh, it's interesting because he says, um, the last sentence, it says, who have recited the sacred sutras or burn incense, we ghost kings will respect such people as we would the Buddha, so the past, present and future. And we just had the story that the Buddha shared himself of the Rakshaksha ghost of the pond who after hearing one verse of the divine teachings, when we'll, we'll take that as the Dharma, uh, he became, uh, he changed and he protected the three brothers from, from them on. Okay. Uh, let's move on. So King Yama says, he says, we will instruct. So this is King Yama speaking to Shakyamuni Buddha. He says, we will instruct the smaller ghosts each of whom has great power as well as the earth spirits to protect such people. But people, the peop what we just read, the people who are practicing even the smallest worth of, uh, of the Dharma. Okay. Bad situations, accidents, 
severe or unexpected illnesses and all other unwelcome events will not even come near their residences or other places they may be, much less enter the door. Okay, what did the Buddha say in return? The Buddha said, the Buddha praised the ghost kings. Excellent, excellent that all of you ghost kings join Lord Yama in protecting good men and women in that way. I shall tell Lord Brahma and Lord Shaka, Chakra to see that you are protected as well. So uh, it's uh, worth noting that uh, uh, although ghost spirits and all that protect us, if we practice, they also need protection and the Buddha is uh, uh, telling the Lord Brahma and Lord Chakra to protect them as well. And then uh, King Yama goes on. He says, when women in Jambuvipa have just born children, be they boys or girls, or when they are just about to give birth, good deeds should be done to increase the benefits of the household thus causing the local earth spirits to be immeasurably pleased. The spirits will then protect the mother and child so that they experience peace and happiness and will bring benefit to the entire family. After the birth, all killing and injuring for the purpose of offering fresh meat to the mother should be carefully avoided, as should family gatherings that involve consumption of alcohol, eating of meat, singing and playing musical instruments. All those things can keep the mother and child from being peaceful and happy. Why is that? At a difficult time of birth, uncountable evil ghosts, including mountain sprites, goblins and spirit beings, desire to eat the strong smelling blood. I quickly order the local earth spirits of the household to protect the mother and child allowing them to be peaceful and happy and to receive other benefits. When people in such households witness those benefits, they should do meritorious deeds to express their gratitude to the earth spirits. If instead they harm and kill and have large family gatherings involving feasting and entertainment, and then the retributions that result from such offenses will be borne by, by they themselves and will bring harm to the mother and child as well. Okay, so next, we are going to look at what is known as uh, Barita, or um, protection uh, sutras that offer protection to the person who, who recites them. Okay, what are Paritas? Let me move on to... Okay. What you see here is a list. Uh, it's not a complete list, but it's a list of various uh, sutras and what are known as uh, paritas, starting with the Atta Natiya Sutta, which we will go through in a bit um, after, after, in the next slide. Uh, then there's the Mangala Sutta, which is the discourse of blessings, the Karinya Metta Sutta, or the discourse on goodwill or loving kindness. Uh, wait, let me see, Kari. No, that's uh, goodwill, yeah. Um, Kanda Parita, known as group protection. Mora Parita, the peacock's protection. Pataka Parita, baby quail uh, protection. That has connection to a Jataka story where the Buddha in the past life was a baby quail. And in his, um, uh, in his wish to protect, um, I think it was his family. It was either a mother or let me see. I don't I should have researched more. Uh, but as a result of the quill's effort and uh, utterance of truth about his own virtue, uh, that spot did not burn. The fire did not consume that spot. And it is said that until this time, uh, that fire will never consume uh, that spot. How we know that story? Well, it was because the Buddha was walking with his group of monks one day and they were surrounded by fire and the Buddha just stood there, not moving. And they asked the Buddha, said, uh, shouldn't we move so that we can escape from the fire? And the, and the Buddha told them this story about the quail and that this very spot that they were standing on is the same spot and therefore fire will not consume 
uh, that spot. Okay, um, so that's the baby quail protection. Then we have the the Jaga uh, Parita or the top of the banner. Then we have the Jaya and then the Abaya Parita. Um, so there's sometimes people think that in in the in the suttas or the 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 small vehicle uh, the the Theravada or Pali Canon that there are no mantras uh, like in in Mahayana Buddhism. So in Mahayana Buddhism, we have quite a few mantras to that we use to protect ourselves, bring peace to the world. Uh, the most famous one, the Shufu just calls it the king of mantras, which is the Shurangama mantra. And then we have the great compassion mantra. And then we also have uh, medicine master Buddha's mantra. We have the Guan Yin has another mantra. The first one is the great compassion mantra. The second one is six syllable mantra or Om Mani Padmi Hong. And there are other mantras as well. Sometimes we take parts of the uh, Shurangama mantra as a complete mantra. Um, but mantras are not seen so much as a uh, form of practice in, in Theravada Buddhism, but actually that's not entirely true. So we have Parita chanting, okay? And um, it's more popular in Sri Lanka or Burma, where there are, when lay people have certain events like birthdays, uh, or you move to a new house, uh, or there's a birth in the family, and they invite monks to chant this uh, devotional and um, uh, protection uh, sutras. So how it works is the same as uh, mantras. Uh, it's a combination based on the power of truth. Power of truth means you utter something that you have done based on virtue. Uh, for example, someone can say, ever since I've left home, I have not spoken a lie. That would be an utterance of truth. Um, there's an, a parita, the Angulimala parita, which I did not list here, that is chanted when a mother is giving birth to protect the mother. And it was Angulimala who stated, use this power of truth. He stated that ever since he became a monk, he had not harmed any living being. And this is significant because Angulimala, before he became a monk, he was the most famous mass murderer uh, around. He had killed 499 people. But the Buddha saw that his conditions were, were right and the Buddha taught him the Dharma and he became an Arhat. So there's a parita called the Angulimala parita that's based on the power of truth. And then there's power of virtue uh, that, uh, that, which is how another way paritas can work, where the parita is based on the good deeds and the virtue of other people that you chant. Uh, there's also the power of loving kindness. For example, the, uh, let me see, which one is it? I think it's the, I think it's a Kanda Parita. Uh, Kanda Parita, uh, monks usually chant when they go into the forest uh, so that uh, they don't get, uh, not attacked, but they don't, get bitten by venomous insects, snakes, uh, centipedes. Uh, that's the Kanda Parita. And then uh, also based on the power of sound. Paritas generate a certain sound um, that, uh, that brings about its efficacy. Uh, I think this lies in the names of that uh, mentioned in some of the, the, the paritas. So paritas work through the power of truth, through the power, through the power of virtue, to the, through the power of loving kindness and the power of sound, both from within the, the person doing the chanting, as well as the uh, references made within the parita, for example, the virtue of the Buddha, for example. Yeah. So something really interesting, there's a, a collection of this paritas called a book of protection, which is the most, from what I'm told, uh, the most popular uh, 
Dharma book in Sri Lanka. It contains 24 sutras, uh, which I've shared some on the screen. And what happens during special events is, is this. Um, they have an altar and on the altar, they have a pot of water and then they have a relic of the Buddha and this book of protection, preferably one which has been written out on, uh, le on, on leaves. And what they do is they take a ball of trade and they tie all this together and they, as they're doing the chanting, these are done for uh, overnight chanting sessions or sometimes up to a week. They pass the thread around. So the monks hold the thread as they chant and then other people hold the, the thread as they chant. Misap has a question. He says, what is your opinion of inviting monks to chant in the hospital for sick patients? Um, what we are talking about right now, this um, monks in Sri Lanka chanting, they also do this chant for people who have illness. Okay. So once they have finished uh, the entire ceremony, which may take one whole day overnight up to a week, then they use the water that they have chanted over. Uh, they, they sprinkle it on people as a blessing. And sometimes they, uh, people drink the water as well, which is what people commonly do when they chant the great, um, compassion mantra. Um, okay. Uh, okay. So Miss Yap, your, your question about inviting monks to chant in the hospital for sick patients, uh, it, I think it's a really good idea. Uh, we, in some of our branches, we have groups of lay people who actually chant Amitabha's name on behalf of the deceased. And if they can, they actually chant it, uh, alongside, not the deceased, I'm sorry, the person who's sick. Um, yeah, not, pa haven't passed away yet. <laughs> yes, yeah, sorry. I've seen uh, it in the hospital. I've seen it in the hospital. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Slip of the tongue. So, uh, yes, there are uh, lay people who do it. I think there are some monks and nuns who, 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 who do it too. Um, if you know them well enough. Um, yes, so it is a good thing. In our tradition, we usually chant, it depends. Uh, we have, uh, you can also put up plaques for people who are sick in during special events. Like now at Tempian, we have red color plaques for people who are around, but either they are sick or, you know, you, they might be going through a bad patch in their lives. And so you can put up plaques for them. Yeah. So Ron says a gold sage monastery, they chant for the sick. Yeah. Earth Star Sutra is one of the sutras that you can chant for people who, who are sick. Okay. So right now let's take a quick look at what the Atta, uh, Atta Natiya Sutta is all about. Okay. Uh, we, we're not going through the whole chanting, the Parita, we're just having a, a, uh, a quick look because to me, it's like a mini Shurangama Sutra, uh, mantra. It has some of the elements of the Shurangama mantra, but in, in more of a condensed form. So how do we get this? If you have been listening to me and you have been remembering what I say, if you look at the first line, it says, then the great King Vesavana or in Sanskrit is Vaishravana, who was seated on one side, said to the blessed one. So this King, this protection spirit, called the Atta Natiya Sutta was given to the monks by the, uh, by King Vesavana, which is one of the four heavenly kings. So he's the king of the Northern direction. He's the leader of all the Yakshas and Rakshakshas and how you identify him. He's the one that carries an, something that looks like an umbrella or more commonly known as a parasol in, in, in Buddhist terms. How did he become? the one of the four heavenly kings, um, in one of his past life, he was a wealthy mill owner. Uh, he processed grain and he had seven mills. So he was a very well off person, but one of his mills, all, all the grain that came up from one of his mills, he dedicated to helping people. So he profited out of six mills, like any reasonable person would, but his seven mil, everything went to help 
uh, charity and 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 people who needed help. And apparently, he this was at a time when people were alive for a very long time. So he did this for twenty thousand years. Yeah. Um, and then when he became the one of the four heavenly kings because of his good deeds, in one of the Buddha's teachings that he listened to, he became a stream enterer or first stage arhat. And uh, there are people who pray to him at trees. Um, uh, a lot of people regard him as the local, um, as their local uh, spirit, guardian spirit. And when they find a big tree, which maybe over time has had some um, miracles happen or things like that, uh, that's where they pay respect to him or make offerings to him. So I'm not going to read this sutra because we're running out of time. But basically, he tells the Buddha uh, that there are many different kinds of, of yakshas. Okay, in the suttas, in the Pali canon, rakshakshas and yakshas are usually together. They are, they are considered, they are lumped together. So why I'm talking about Rakshashas now and not Yakshas is because towards the end, to, or towards the later part of the Medicine Master Sutra, there are 12 Yaksha kings who address the Buddha. So during that, that part of the Sutra, we will look more at Yakshas. Right now it's more on Rakshashas. So this sutra came about because the um, the heavenly king Vesavana is explaining to the Buddha that there are many yakshas, eminent yakshas, middle rank yakshas, inferior yang, uh, rank yakshas. There are some who are pleased with the Buddha and some who are not pleased with the Buddha. Okay, and he says he explains why he says well it's because the blessed one the Buddha. He says, teaches virtue, teaches the Dharma to abstain from killing, from stealing, from sexual misconduct, from false speech, from uh, intoxicants. And this is something that some of the Rakshas cannot accept. Rakshas, rak, yakshas, Rakshashas are just like people. There are some who move towards virtue, who find the Buddha's teachings like the most amazing thing in the world. But there are some who just, no, they life is about enjoyment you know it's about making the most of your time uh, with the five uh, senses and, and and the pleasures of life and for in the case of rakshakshas eating people who <laughs> venture into your pond so um king vesavana says he says surely bante they are disciples of the blessed one they frequent the remote recesses of forest and woodland wilderness where there is no sound, no tumult, where breezes are void of human contact and suitable for man's seclusion and quiet contemplation. They are eminent yakshas who haunt this forest, who have no faith in the word of the Blessed One. So he's saying they are monks who, because of their meditative uh, their, their practice, they like secluded areas away from people. However, there are yakshas who go to these areas as well. And some of these yakshas, you know, they're not, they don't consider themselves disciples of the Buddha. So he says, Bhante, uh, that's how he addressed the Buddha. He says, may the blessed one learn the Atanata protection so that the displeased yakshas may be pleased, so that the monks and nuns, laymen, laywomen may be at ease, guarded, protected, and unharmed. Okay. He explains, he says, if any monk or nun or person learns by heart this Atanata protection and be word perfect in repeating it. Notice it says word perfect. When we recite mantras, we want to recite it uh, word for word. So he says, if any non-human, and then he goes through the whole list of all of the, the various ghosts, spirits, kumbandas, etc. He says, were to walk with him or her, meaning the Buddha's disciple, or stand or sit or lie down with him or her with malevolent intent. Such a non-human happy one, or the Buddha, he says, such a non-human will not obtain hospitality from any town or township, will not obtain a place to dwell, nor could live in the kingdom of Alaka Manda. Alaka Manda, I guess, is the kingdom of all the ghosts and spirits. So basically, if 
someone learns the Atta, Atanatiya Sutta and recites it word for word, then if any spirit or ghost still tries to do harm to the person, in effect, that person is going to be ostracized from the rest of the Yaksha uh, community. And he further says he will not be able to attend the meetings of the Yakshas. Further, he will not be accepted or given in marriage, apparently get married. He says he would be reproached by casting remarks on his deformed teeth or eyes or any part of the body. And the non-humans would put an empty bowl over his head and split it in seven pieces. How about that? So um, that's how the, the Yakshas live. And if anyone were to harm a follower of the Buddha who has learned the Atta Natiya Sutta, and I believe this extends to Shurangama Mantra as well. Uh, I can't say for sure, but I have confidence that it does. Then this is the repercussion waiting the Yakshas or Rakshakshas. Isn't it interesting? Okay, now we have a few minutes left. Uh, anyone else with anything? If not, I will uh, share the story that I haven't shared yet. Okay, let me, I'm going to um, jump slides a bit. To, let me see if I can. I'm going to slide number four. I don't know how to do that quickly. So I'm just going to, sorry for the flashing on your screen. Okay, so this is a positive story about how uh, spirits can be helpful. Okay, so the Buddha had a very devoted lay disciple, Anatta Pindika, who is known as the Buddha's chief patron. That means he was the most generous, uh, not just wealth wise, but in his heart as well, in supporting the Buddha and his disciples. Uh, he was the richest merchant in Sawati during the Buddha's time. And the Jata Grove, the very famous Jata Grove, which is mentioned in many sutras, was purchased by him from Prince Jata. Uh, and how he purchased it is a very famous story. Prince Jata didn't want to sell the, the very peaceful pub. Uh, so he made a joke saying, if you cover the land entirely with gold, then I'll sell it to you. And that exa that's exactly what Anatta Pindika did. He was so rich. He covered the whole uh, park with gold coins. And that's how it became to be known as Jata Grove, which was the first training center for the monks. It was the, it was the first centralized place that the monks could uh, gather and train at. Before that, the monks just went their separate ways into under trees and into forests in, 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 in various places. Okay, so the story goes like this. Um, there was a big uh, flood and Anatta Pindika lost all his wealth or almost all his wealth. So what happened was that because he was very generous, he had lent a lot of money to his business. He, he, he made a lot of loans, uh, business loans to his friends uh, who had not repaid him. And he felt bad. He was the kind of person who felt bad to ask them to return the loan. That's how nice of a person he was. And um, so because of the flood that washed away all his property, his wealth was now running out. The millionaire had now become uh, poor, but despite lack of funds, he still continued to provide food for the monks, but he couldn't provide delicacies as before. Uh, but he provided, I think, porridge. Um, and it was said that a modest serving of thin rice gruel, that's what he provided. So at that time in, um, his house, he had a seven story palace is described at the gate of his palace. There was a spirit living there. So this spirit wasn't living in a tree, but it was living above the gate. And Anatta Pindika always hosted the Buddha or the Buddha's disciples at his place for arms. 
And every time they came, the spirit following the law of the spirit realm had to come down from his place from above the gate to pay respects uh, to the Buddha and his disciples. So this made it very inconvenient for the spirit because, you know, he, Anatta Pindika, I would guess, gets uh, uh, visitors almost every day, Buddha's disciples. So every day he had to, during lunch, then he had to come down and pay his respects and then go back up. So he thought of a way to stop that from happening. So what he did was he appeared to one of the servants and he suggested that they stop providing alms food to the Buddha and the disciples, but the servant paid him no attention. So this spirit, then um, he he uh, he tried to convince Anat Anatta Pindika's son to turn against the monks, but that also failed. So finally, what he did was he, he said the spirit appeared in his supernatural aura to Anatta Pindika himself and tried to persuade him that since he was now so poor, it would be prudent to stop giving alms. So he tried to take advantage of the situation and convince another Pindika that since he was poor, he should stop uh, practicing generosity. So what did Anatta Pindika say? He said he only knew of three treasures, which is the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. Meaning his physical wealth, he didn't consider a treasure, but what he considered treasures were the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. So he said that's all that mattered and he will no matter what happens he will continue uh, providing arms to the to to the sangha and he said that since you do not uh, he told the spirit he says since you do not uh, you are not supportive of this he says there is no place in my home for enemies of the buddha so apparently it is the law that if the owner of the place uh, tells the spirit to go, the spirit has to go. So the spirit following the law of his realm had to abandon the place. So what he did then, he went to the, the spirit protector of the whole city of Savati and he requested for a new place to stay. It's very interesting. And so this, uh, um, uh, guardian earth spirit, I guess, couldn't help him. So guess what he did? This guardian earth spirit referred uh, this evicted spirit to the four divine kings, the four heavenly kings, probably the uh, King Vasravana. Um, but these four also did not feel qualified to make a decision because I guess the reason is this, uh, this spirit had wrong Anatta Pindika, who was held in high esteem, and he had also, uh, uh, I would say, in a way, uh, because of his lack of support for the Buddha, uh, wronged the Buddha. So the four heavenly kings referred this case to Lord Chakra. So this is just like how we have, you know, the, the courts and then the court of appeal, and then you a step up, uh, there's a supreme court, and I don't know what else. I'm not so familiar with the legal system, but there are various courts where you can, your case get referred to higher and higher. So he went to Lord Chakra, who are king of the gods. And as all this was happening, the spirit had become a bit more reflective and he became aware of his wrong conduct. So when he approached Lord Chakra, he asked Lord Chakra uh, for forgiveness. And so Lord Chakra said, okay, as a way to atone for your misdeeds, you have to help the layman Anatta Pindika regain his fortune. So first thing he had to do, okay, to um, uh, to be forgiven, was that all the all his wealth, Anatta Pindika's wealth, that was washed away. He had to, the spirit had to collect them all back and and and. Re and give it to Anatta Pindika. Secondly, all the buried treasure that he could find, I guess, on Anatta Pindika's property, I guess, I'm not sure, uh, he would have to uh, uncover and give it to Anatta Pindika. And the final thing he had to do was he had to convince everyone 
who owed Anatap Indika money to pay him back. So with a great deal of effort, the spirit, uh, it is said that the spirit fulfilled this task. And uh, as for the debtors, the spirit had to appear in their dreams. And I don't know, maybe scare them or something or, or make sense to them so that they would repay, repay back their loans. So not after this, not only did Anatta Pindika uh, regain back all his wealth, but he got more uh, as a result as well. Then the spirit, after doing all this, appeared before the Buddha and asked the Buddha to forgive him for his um, disrespect of, of the Buddha. Yeah. Um, and the teaching from this, the Buddha taught him, he says, the Buddha taught him that a person who strove for perfection in generosity or giving could not be kept from it by anything in the world, neither by spirits, nor gods, nor devils, nor even by the threat of death. So all of us, we've explored generosity, the power of generos generosity before. So the Buddha says that um, anyone who strives for perfection in giving, and this is like a Bodhisattva teaching, a teaching for Bodhisattvas, because someone who strives for the perfection of giving cannot be swayed even by death, which is what a Bodhisattva does. Yeah. Okay, we have come to the end. Uh, next week, we will look at a, a new part uh, of the Sutra. Uh, anyone with questions before we transfer the merit or any stories? I'm surprised no one has more stories of ghosts or spirits to share. Put my palms together, invite everyone to join me. May every living being our minds as one and radiant with life share the fruits of peace with hearts of goodness luminous and bright if people hear and see how hands and hearts can find in giving unity may our minds away to great compassion wisdom and to joy May kindness find reward. May all who sorrow leave their grief and pain. May this boundless light dispel the darkness of their endless night. Because our hearts are one, this world of pain turns into paradise. May all become compassionate and wise. May all become compassionate and wise. Okay, let's do our bows to the Buddha and Shufu. I'm just going to change my microphone settings because um, I realized last week I couldn't hear the sound of the bell. Okay. Okay, I think now you should be able to hear the sound of the bell. Okay, three bows to the Buddha. Second bow. Third bow. Half bow. Bowing respect to the Venerable Master. Second bow. Third bow. Half bow. All right, everyone. I'm Itofo, and we will see you next week. Um, so again, we are having a Fochi uh, Amitabha session at Tenpian Monastery right now. Today is the first day, and um, a lot of familiar names or faces that usually join us today uh, have joined uh, the Forchi instead. So if you want to join, um, I I believe the link has been sent to the WhatsApp group. So highly recommended everyone to join. If time difference is difficult, 
CTTB is also having and they're sharing it over Zoom uh, Amitabha session, which I believe is, is beginning tomorrow. Okay. All right. Amitabha, bye everyone.